Hello my internet friends and welcome to this video in which we're going to be learning about asynchronous JavaScript by understanding what synchronous or sync JavaScript is first. This video is actually part of a little asynchronous JavaScript mini series I am doing. So if you do enjoy this video, please do go on to watch the others to really get a well-rounded uh, learning experience of what asynchronous JavaScript is all about. But before we get going, a quick word from our video sponsors, which is the reason that this video is here for you today. Hashnode is one of the easiest ways to start a developer blog that will get seen globally. If you are looking to get noticed by the developer community, Hashnode will help distribute your posts on their platform. It's a blogging site built for developers by developers. And not only that, you can move it onto your personal domain super easy too. Just check out these wonderful reviews. Please do have a go at signing up. And if you do, please use the link in my description to let them know this ad has worked. Now, if you have ever encountered a website that relies on a database or an API or some other third party service that can take time retrieving our data, it is likely that you have already come across a use case for asynchronous JavaScript. To allow us to understand what asynchronous JavaScript is, let's start off by making sure we understand what synchronous JavaScript is too. So, if you have covered the fundamentals of JavaScript, you would have unknowingly been coding the majority of your lessons synchronously. Let's look at some code. Here we have three functions. Now, if I call the functions like this, so all three of them here, what do you expect will happen in the console? We will get these strings. I'm the first action, I'm the second action, and I'm the third action show up in exactly that order. This is because JavaScript runs from top to bottom, or in other words, sequentially. The lines are executed one after the other. Now, let's look at another example. So here we have an example in which I am grabbing a button from our HTML and then grabbing that button again and using the add event listener JavaScript method and passing through the event of click followed by some code. Then we have the console log of count followed by document create element in which I create an h1 tag and assign it to the const text. Next, I'm grabbing the text and giving it a string, which has nothing to do with the count, and then sticking it in our HTML. So if I click this button in our browser, when do you expect the text to show up in the browser? Let's have a look and see. You will notice that the text only shows up after the entire loop has completed. This will take a bit of time, not a lot in this example, but definitely more than say, if we were to do one loop like this. But why does this time delay happen? Well, while each operation is being processed, nothing else can happen. Rendering is paused. This is because JavaScript is single threaded. Only one thing can happen at a time on a single main thread and everything else is blocked until an operation completes. Before we move on, it's actually important to tell you that today, many computers have multiple cores, so it can do multiple things at once. Programming languages that can support multiple threads can use multiple cores to complete multiple tasks simultaneously. Great. Now that we have covered synchronous code, let's get into asynchronous code. Now, for the reason we spoke about earlier to do with blocking, many web API features now use asynchronous code. This is especially true for those that access or fetch something from something external. This can be fetching a file from the network or getting data from a database or accessing a video stream from a webcam and so, so much more. Now, this can sometimes be problematic. Let's have a look at why. Here is some code that's been written in an attempt to fetch an external image so we can use it in our file. When you fetch an image from a server, 
it is unlikely that it will be returned immediately. This is because the image can take a long time to come to us. This means that when it comes to running the second line here, it could throw an error because the response is not yet available. So in other words, you have no image that's come back for you to work with. So think of it like this. Here we have some code. Here we have the code that is responsible for fetching the image. Here we have some code that displays the image in our browser, all in one thread. Now, if you run our code, we will run it sequentially. So I'm bringing out all the buzzwords here. This means that this code will get run from top to bottom. Okay, so this code will get run, this code will get run, but uh oh, it's taking a long time to get a response. In the meantime, the third code gets run and we have no image to show and we get errors. Okay, so we are running it, but there's no image. The part here is being run asynchronously, but at the same time, the rest of the code is living its life as usual and moving on without the response. That is not the behavior we want. We need to get the images to show, right? But how? For this, we can use either an old style callback or a new style promise. We will go into these in the next video in this mini series. I'll see you soon.